Hi, I'm Dr. John Hutton, founder of Blue Manatee Press. My childhood was spent in two main places, outside and in my imagination. When the weather was nice, and even when it wasn't, I was outside getting dirty. When I was inside, especially at bedtime, my parents read to me. There were books all over our house, from classic picture books to novels to encyclopedias, if anyone remembers what those are. So I have vivid memories of sailing with Max to where the wild things are, causing mischief with Bananas Gorilla in Busy Town, saving fish friends with swimming, and most of all, drawing on the walls with Harold and his purple crayon. With all these books, my mom would ask questions, try to answer mine, and invite me to connect stories to my life. These experiences inspired me to read with my own children early and often, where I've been fortunate to accompany them on new adventures, fueling more amazing memories. It also inspired my wife and I to rescue a children's bookstore called Blue Manatee and run it for almost 20 years. My experiences as a child and with my own children also inspired my work as a pediatrician and author to help as many families as possible experience the love of reading together. My mom was a writer and my dad was a doctor, so I suppose I'm channeling each of them, which is fun. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that parents and other grown-ups read to their children beginning as soon as possible after birth, highlighting benefits of consistent, fun reading routines. These include better language, understanding of how books work, which is called print knowledge, interest in reading, bonding, kindergarten readiness, and success in school. Sounds pretty great. However, while consistency is important, there's a huge variability in how families share books together, the amount of talking, questions, and bringing stories to life. And this can have a huge impact on benefits and outcomes, kind of like a turbocharger on a car. There are also many anxieties and misconceptions about how to read right to a child, such as, can you talk about the pictures? What about things not in the book? Is it okay for the child to interrupt to ask questions? These are especially common in families from disadvantaged backgrounds who may have less experience, resources, or confidence. Dialogic reading is a method that was developed in the 1990s to help families read more interactively and enjoyably together, which applies for children about age two and older who have reasonable verbal skills. The term dialogic reading sounds complicated, but it's not. Actually, it's just fun reading, which many families may do naturally. That said, it's been extensively studied and shown to build language and literacy skills, relationships, interest in reading, and even early brain development, which sounds amazingly fun to me. Dialogic reading is represented by the acronyms PEER and CROWD. PEER stands for prompt, which means ask a question, evaluate what the child says in response in a supportive way, expand on the evaluated response, repeat and then repeat or summarize the question response statement. Crowd represents five types of questions, completion or finishing a sentence, recall something earlier in the story, open-ended questions which don't have a right answer, WH questions which do, such as what or where, distancing or relating the story to a child's life. While this seems simple, the challenge is how to coach families in the dialogic approach, especially since the terms seem abstract. Of course, the best way to learn anything is to practice, and what better way to practice reading children's books than with actual children's books? Which brings us to DR Books. There are currently four books in the series, and I wrote each of them to be stealth user's manuals for dialogic reading. Each features all of the peer crowd elements, and by reading the story, parents and other caregivers practice dialogic principles in a fun and interactive way. The goal is for them to not, be reali not even realize they're being coached. The best way for me to show you how DR Books work is to read one of the books. While I love dogs, cats, and cows, let's try the newest one, Bugs. And as a special treat, I'm gonna read it with my daughter who is currently off camera. So, Bugs. The itsy bitsy. Spider. Climbed up the water. Spout. Down came the. Rain. And. Hold on, did you just see a bug? Cool, what kind of bug was it? Was it a ladybug, a bumblebee? A spider or a firefly? A spider. Was it big or small? Small. Was it inside or outside? Outside. That's good. It was outside, wasn't it? It was going down the water spout. What do bugs like to do? Spin webs, creep and crawl, chirp and sing, sip tea? What do you think they like to do? All these things? You think they like to sip tea? That's really interesting. That would be interesting. They definitely spin webs. At least spiders do. How many legs do spiders have? One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. Eight, that's right. Spiders have eight legs. Yes, eight. Most have eight eyes, too. Eight fuzzy legs. Let's say spiders have eight fuzzy legs. Spiders, spiders have eight fuzzy legs. legs. And here's a little ant down here says, I'm an insect and I have six. And the grasshopper says, me too. Do you like grasshoppers? No. No. Where do spiders live? In a web. Yes, in webs. Wonderful white sticky webs. Let's say wonderful white sticky web. Wonderful white sticky, sticky web. web. And here's, who's that guy right there? Fly. The fly says, I find them not so wonderful. What's that spider doing? Climbing. Yes, it's climbing. Climbing up a water spout. Climbing up a water spout at Grandpa's house. What's Grandpa doing? Reading a book. Yes. Let's say spiders climb at Grandpa's house. Spiders climb at Grandpa's house. Who's this down here sitting? Who do you think that is? I think it's a the prank. Yeah, he's saying, look out for rain. What's your favorite kind of bug? Butterfly. Where did you see it? In the garden. You've seen one in the garden? Yeah. I've seen one in the garden too. That's great. Well, thank you for sharing that book with me. Of course. All right. Well, that was fun. So thank you for your time and attention for all that you do for children and families. Happy reading and enjoy.